on the calculator. Okay, so to find all of these data points and all the things that are going on, just type them in list number one. Your calculator defaults to everything it's doing in list number one. You go to stat, calc, one variable statistics, and hit enter. And then it's going to tell you all the things that you want pretty much from list number one. Um, pretty sure I hit enter, but let's try it again. There we go. So the X bar, which says 39, that's my mean. The EX, that's the sum of my list, that's 390. The SX is my standard deviation, which is 18.886, roughly. You'll find out later. Zach. If you were to arrow down in your calculator, it'll also tell you the minimum value. It'll tell you the first quartile, the median, and the maximum. So min, Q1, median, Q3, and max which are kind of nice for later on when you need to do some other things with it. So 18, 25, 34 and a half, 51 and 74. So if we go back to our notes and we start answering some of these questions, for example, if I wanted to answer the first part which said the spread, I would say the spread is, bless you, from whatever my minimum value, 18 to my maximum value, 74. I would say the spread is from blah, blah. The range, if I'm doing the range, I would take the 74 minus the 18 and whatever value I got, so 56, right? That is my range. The standard deviation came out of our calculator. That was the S. And the standard deviation uh, we said was 18.886. If I wanted to find my variance, all I would have to do is square that. So somebody could square 18.886, please. 356.681. Always go to three decimals. Your final answer must be accurate, accurate to the nearest thousandth, which means you will have to carry more decimals to get there and be accurate, but your final answer must be accurate to three decimals. In the next group, they talk about the quartiles. Um, quartiles are talking about middle halves of data sets. So if you start chopping things in half, that's talking about your quartiles. So that's where the median is. It's exactly at the 50% mark. Wherever that number is and wherever your first number is, exactly in the middle of those two is Q1. And then between the median and your highest number, your maximum value, that's Q3. So it's like the median of the upper half and lower half. That's what they are. And that's what this is talking about. So you'll notice here it says the first quartile lies one quarter of the way up. And it's greater than 25% of the observation. So 25% are below it. Um, the third quartile, 75%. It's more than 75%. Greater than 75% of the observations. The interquartile range just means subtract Q1 and Q3. From our observation up above, if we were looking at Q1 minus Q3, we would have had 51 minus 25, or in other words, 26. That would be our interquartile range. It's Q3 minus Q1. Oftentimes we talk about things that are outliers, things that kind of don't obey the normal rules kind of deal. And there's an actual mathematical way to calculate them. So by definition, an outlier is an individual observation that's way outside the overall pattern of our graph. When you classify it, it's more than one and a half times the interquartile range, either above Q3 
or below Q1. And so the formula is down below for how to do that, but we're actually going to practice one. A um, couple other things. First of all, a resistance measure is when a measurement is relatively unaffected by extreme outliers. Medians and IQRs in general are those kind of resistant measures. They're not really affected by outliers, is what they're saying. That's why they're resistant. Special note, the mean and the standard deviation are very good descriptions for symmetric distributions that don't have outliers. So oftentimes, what you'll see is they'll oftentimes take a set of data, like for example, the average income in the United States of America they might talk about, which is the mean. But then they'll also give you the median income. If they're really close together, there's a good chance that your data is symmetric, but they also give the median because that's a resistant measurement. So if you include Bill Gates and Oprah Winfrey in the United <coughs> States of America's income, it starts to skew the data for the mean. But if you talk about the median income, those two incomes don't really do much to the middle income in the United States. And so that's why they oftentimes talk about the median as well as the mean. Down below, we have a set of data. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the scores that would be classified as outliers. I'm also going to show you how to do this on your calculator. Um, so first, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type, I never do any of this stuff in this class by hand. Don't ever do that. Use your calculator all the time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put all of this data in our calculator, and then I'm going to talk about how to do all these different things. All right, now let's list, list one, all the data. I can go back to what we did before, and I can go stat, calc, enter, enter. And it should give me all of the different things that I need. Um, gives me the mean, the median, the mode, IQR, I can find from there, all that kind of stuff that I want. So let's go back and see what they wanted from our notes here, and then I'll come back and take a look at it. So in our notes, they wanted the first quartile, the third quartile, and the interquartile range, and then the scores would be classified as outliers. So let me show you how I'd um, do this on the calculator, and then we can go from there. So on the calculator, if I look and see what my Q1 and Q3 are, because I need that first, I can arrow down and take a look at both those things. So Q1 is 26, Q3 74.5. You guys get the same thing? All right. So Q1 was 26, and Q3 was 74.5. So next I need to find my IQR. I find my IQR by subtracting those two things. So 74.5 minus 26, and I end up with 48.5. Thank you. 48.5, and then after that, in order to find out my outliers, I take 1.5 times that IQR, or in other words, the 1.5 times the 48.5, 72.75. Okay, so what I'm looking for are values that are either 72.75 below Q1 or above Q3. The way that I would write that is 72.75 plus whatever my Q3 is, which is 74.5. And if I add those two things together, I get 147.25. So I'm looking for numbers that are greater than that, or if I take the Q1, which would be 26, and subtract off 74, nope, sorry, 72.75, and I wrote that wrong on the first one too, didn't I? <coughs> no, I didn't, okay. Minus 72.75, what number is that? Negative how much? 46.75. 46 
Okay, so are there any numbers in our data that are more than 147.25? No. Are there any values that are less than negative 46.75? No. There are no outliers. Now the cool thing is, on your calculator, you can graph this and see if there are outliers right away. There's a very easy way to do it. I can go to my calculator, and in my calculator, I can go second, y equals, I can go into my plots, and this time, instead of the histogram that we were using earlier, I can go down to the first box and whisker, which shows outliers. <coughs> and then I can go zoom, and you want to go zoom stats to look at your statistics that you entered in, which is zoom 9. And if there were outliers, you would see this box and whisker, this middle line here is the median, the far left part of the box is Q1, the far right is Q3, and the ends are the max and the min. And I can go trace, and it tells you the minimum value is 14. If I arrow to the right, it tells you what your Q1 is, what your median is, what your Q3 is, what your maximum value is. If there are no little dots separated past the whiskers, there are no outliers. You can easily see it right away on your calculator. So that's kind of a nice feature of your calculator.